You look good, bud. I got dog hair everywhere. Yeah, you do. Damn it, dog. It's getting late. It's getting late. It's getting late. And we're getting drunk. How you that doing? That's not how we should start <laughs> this episode. How are you doing? New table. <laughs> new location. I mean, can I ask that a, a different way? No. Oh, all right. How you, you're, how you're are you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> should we just start the show? Well, we should just start the show. Let's just start it. Welcome back to the Beer Cave, the show where we drink beer, review beer, and talk everything beer. My name's Audi. My name's Derek. And today we're going to be talking about some of the first beers that we ever had. But before that, let's crack a beer. Let's do it. So today we're going to be looking at 14 degree ESB from Bent Paddle Brewing in Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, now if you've ever been up to Duluth, Minnesota, you know how cold it gets up there. But luckily they've got a few breweries to uh, kind of warm you up, including Bent Paddle Brewing. The ESB here that we're looking at comes in at 5.6 alcohol by volume and a IBU or International Bitters unit at 32. And ESB actually stands for Extra Special Bitters. And actually the two different styles of ESB is a traditional British style and the other is more of an American modern uh, feel to it. I'm not really sure which one we're going to be looking at today, uh, but either way, we should be looking for notes of uh, nutty, kind of dark amber color. Amber nut brown ale. Exactly. We're, we're going to get some caramelization, maybe a little bit of nuttiness to it. Overall, not a lot of bitterness. Uh, Derek, did you want to read the, the can? Yeah. Our well-rounded approach to the classic British ale, there's the middle of the road, and then there's the middle of the river. And then there's one thing that's important in the middle of the river. It's balance. That's really well put. That's kind of what we're going to be looking for today is, is kind of a really well-balanced beer. Should we crack it open? Let's crack it open. Let's do it. Love that sound. Ooh, nice. I got a little bit left in the can. Nope. I'm going to let it sit. <laughs> I'm going to let it sit. I mean, right off the bat, I smell like toffee and, and nuttiness. Toffee, nuttiness, that caramel. Yeah. You know. The room just filled with caramel. Yes, instantly. <laughs> don't, don't even have to get close to it. No, nope, nope. Very, very strong aromas in a good way. Mm -hmm. Very good way. Right off the bat, like a good two fingers of head. Very rocky head. Now when we talk about a rocky head, uh, we don't mean, don't go down that road. Now when we're talking about the head and being rocky, we're talking about the size of the bubbles. How big are the bubbles? Are they bigger uh, or are they smaller? Usually when they're bigger, um, usually when they're bigger, we're talking about a more rocky head. And this one does really have a little bit of an inconsistent, like you were saying, but the head stays there. Yeah. It, it just sits. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool to see, uh, but you're also not seeing any carbonation. Yeah. Uh, when we look through it, there's not, I mean, I can see the bubbles a little bit, but that's cause I'm holding it up to the light. Um, if you were to just have this sitting, you wouldn't, couldn't tell that there's a lot of carbonation sitting in the yeah. liquid. But what color is this? This is like a, kind of like a tan brown. Tan brown, little bronze. Bronze. To it. Oh yeah, like a shiny penny. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, a little bit of orange to it, but not, yeah. not much. I get uh, a little bit of green apple on the aroma. Kind of that, definitely a fall feel. A mm -hmm. little bit of cinnamon. Oh yeah, a little, a little bit of cinnamon. A little bit of cinnamon, yeah. but not overpowering. Yeah, that's well put. Cinnamon's great. Mm -hmm. All right, should we go ahead and sip? Yeah, cheers. Oh. So good. Yeah. So good. That's really, really good. Very smooth, like they said, balanced. Yeah, it's very well balanced. It's it's very malt forward. No, no hops, no bitters to it. It doesn't have that, that ale really mm -hmm. forward taste where it's not like a pale ale at all. I get a little bit of snappiness with the, just off the, uh, the top end. Yep. Just a little snap to it to give that malty caramel note a little snap to it, which is really, really nice. You do get a little sweetness to it, but it's mm -hmm. definitely not overly sweet or anything like that. So the reason why we chose this beer is actually because this is actually one of the first beers that we can remember, one of the first craft beers that we can remember having together. 
We actually, when we first turned 21, one of our birthday gifts uh, was to go to a beer tasting class. That's right. It was a birthday gift. It was a birthday gift. It was a birthday gift. Yeah. But we took the class and we got to try a bunch of different local beers. And this was one that we could remember off the, all the ones that we had. So we did this class. It was, you know, just as we were 21 years old and we went and just tried a bunch of different beers. I think there was eight different beers that we were able to try different styles from different, you know, most of them being local, and this is probably the beer I remember the most. Within my first year of drinking, this is one of the beers I remember the most. And I guess at the time, I didn't really like, I didn't, you didn't like, like it beers. at first. You didn't like beers at first. I didn't like beer at first. When we first turned 21, Derek actually took to craft beer, to beer in general, uh, a lot faster than I yes. did. Uh, my dad was into craft beer, uh, and so when I first turned 21, the day after I turned 21, I went to a brewery without you, because you weren't into beer. I feel cheated uh, on. And I went to Surly Brewing, one of the more popular breweries based in Minnesota. Um, and I had Surly Bender, which isn't too far off from this beer. Uh, it's yeah. like coffee nut brown ale. Yeah, that's right. Um, and then I had Surly Furious. And those were kind of some of the first few craft beers I had. Yeah, because when you were getting into beers, I, uh, embarrassingly enough, yes, only would drink Mike's Hard Lemonade at the time. I know. I know, I know. And actually it wasn't until you showed me, which if you have followed the Beer Cave since we first started this channel, uh, you were the person that turned me on to Fulton Lonely Blonde, yes. which was one of the, actually the very first Beer Cave episode was Fulton yep. Lonely Blonde. The loneliest blonde. Yep. So I have to ask you a question. What do you remember the first worst beer you ever had? You're gonna agree with me on this one, and I think it might have actually been in that class that we did in Deed Day Tripper. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was, it's a pale ale from a local brewery, and Indeed makes some phenomenal beers. This is just one that, for us, really misses the mark. What was your, one of your first worst craft beers? So, no offense Indeed, but you're also gonna agree with me on this one. Indeed decided they were going to step out of the box completely. They were gonna make a beer using lavender, sunflower, and dates. Called it LSD. It tasted like a disgusting candle. Uh, it was not very good. If I remember right, the lavender was just so overpowering that it was just almost offensively off-putting. Like just not tasty. And what was the first kind of domestic beer that you remember drinking? First domestic, the first light domestic beer I had was Coors Light, believe it or not. Yeah. Really? I am not a big Coors Light fan by any means. Uh, it's actually my least favorite out of them, but yeah, it was a, uh, it was a Coors Light was our, my first ever light beer at a music festival that we were at actually. Oh. Yeah. One of the first ones I remember is uh, my coworker got me drinking Green Belt Premiums. Ooh, Premiums. Out of the bottle. <laughs> I was a glass bottle drinker when I first started. I thought it was the coolest thing. After I realized they tasted like corn syrup, just overly sweet. But those are kind of the first few beers that we really got into and we're lucky enough in Minnesota here that there's just an overabundance of breweries. So we were able to go and explore and being able to get out and go meet at a brewery was very easy. Very easy, especially on you know, a Wednesday or something. We could just go to a brewery, have a couple beers and try something we haven't had. Yeah. It was a really fun way to get out and one, socialize and two, get into a very fun hobby. Yeah, it's it's been actually really nice being a craft beer fan in the culture that craft beer is right now. Now that we've been kind of sipping on this 14 degree ESB from Ben Paddle, how are you still feeling with it? Still consistently solid. He's from feeling first it. sip down to here. It's still has that, that nuttiness. It has mellowed out a little bit. Mm -hmm. I get a little bit more of the toffee, a little more. I don't get the cinnamon anymore. Yeah, the cinnamon really, I think that bite that was off the top, that it's, cinnamon bite was is gone now. One gripe I do have is I feel like the, the carbonation is a little low. Yeah, it, and that's could be how it's brewed. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Which is very interesting too, because you look at uh, the lacing or the legs on our glass, and I mean, there's a lot of foam here still. 
I've been twirling mine, so I've been getting rid of them. Seeing that, you would think that it's a very highly carbonated beer. Yes. But it, it does feel a little slicker on the on the tongue, a little bit heavier on the tongue. Doesn't have that zippiness that a high carbonated beer does. It does help, I think, mellow it out a little bit. But for being an ale, I kind of expected a little more of that bite. Uh, for being 5.6, does it seem boozy to you at all? Not really. I don't get a lot of booziness. Okay, see, I kind of do. I don't. It's It kind of... I guess I get it. it it's dry. It's kind of drying my tongue. It's, okay. After I'm done drinking it, it's kind of sucking the moisture out of my tongue. So I'm I'm wanting to go back for more, uh, which is actually really good. I, I yeah, enjoy that because I I'm loving drinking this. Oh, this is a phenomenal beer. Part of me doesn't want to over drink it mm -hmm. because then I'll get sick of it. So it's just a good beer to go back to from now and again, knowing it's going to be a just mm -hmm. solid beer. Yeah. You know, you know what I would love to do with this beer? I'd love to be sitting in an, like a British pub drinking this beer, eating uh, some um, some kind of like sausage dish or something like that. Good. Oh wow, that good. was really good. Poor. Good. Don't don't give me a good push. <laughs> don't no. Don't give me that. That was that was awful. Good. But no, just sitting in an, uh, a British pub having a. a I know bratwurst are a German thing, but some kind of sausage link with some kind of potato, uh, like some kind of potato side dish and drinking this beer. Some fish it and has chips. A, oh my gosh. Fish and chips. Fish and chips with this would be phenomenal. Yes. Just in a kind of a low lit British pub, fish and chips. Like a Friday evening. Yep. You know, just, this is perfect. Just as it's starting to get a little chilly. It, Beautiful. Even as this beer is sat too, it's gotten a little bit warmer and it hasn't affected the flavor in a negative way. Some of those beers, they get warm, all of it goes out the window. This beer is still good as it warms up, it just continues to be consistent. Well, should we uh, give it a review? Let's, let's give it a rating. So every episode of the Beer Cave, we review a beer and we give it a rating. And our rating system is a thumbs rating system. Anywhere from a thumbs up Thumbs sideways, thumbs down, and everything in between. On three, should we give our rating? Let's do it. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, Just no surprise there. No it's surprise. Very, very solid beer. I love the the roasty, or not even roasty. I keep wanting to say that, but it's almost like 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 caramel. Caramel is mm -hmm. kind of like that burnt sugar um, kind of molassesy yep. kind of feel to it, and Absolutely. I love those flavors, especially in the cold winters that we get here in Minnesota. It warms you up. It kind of gives you that that homey feel to it. That's why I gave it a thumbs up. I gave it a thumbs up just because it's, like I said, it's consistent beer. You can go back to it every time, know what to expect. And we have drank this over the years. And it's every time I look forward to it. It's it's a, a simple pleasure that you get from a brewery. And it's very tough to do. That was 14 Degree ESB from Bent Paddle Brewing in Duluth, Minnesota. Let us know if you've ever had this beer. Uh, we definitely want to hear from you and, and, know, and hear what you thought of the beer. So drop a little line in the comments and let us know what you thought of it or what you thought of this episode. We're always taking notes and trying to better our, our show. Also, if you could hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell so that when we upload a video, you know about it. Also, so don't be afraid to let us know if there's beers you want us to review. If you think of something that we would want to try, let us know. On that note, cheers. Cheers. Uh, there you go. There we go. Good push, bud. Thank you. Good push. Fix my hair. Consistently solid. Yeah. From first tip to first minute. They really do, but this one is. We have a we have a dog. We have a studio dog that likes likes to talk. His name is Hudson. He might make an appearance. We'll see. Throw <coughs> <coughs> up in my mouth a little bit. Throw <coughs> over there. I don't, don't know why. Making Woo! space. Yeah. <laughs> Making space. <laughs> you, you got it here. Oh. Just get that for you. I got it. So when I first turned 21, uh, Derek had already dabbled. Well, when... That's restart. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh god, I'm digging myself into a hole.